There have been many SpongeBob games over the years, and they've come in many different forms. Sometimes they're online, sometimes they're for a console, and sometimes they get really unique with them. But I'd like to take a trip back to 1999 to see some of the first games to show up on Nickelodeon's website. Long before we had this, we had this. So let's check some of them out. This first one is called SpongeBob's Jellyfishing Game, without the G. You're met with music from the show and some pretty simple instructions. All of these older games have a much darker feel to them than the more vibrant feel the show is known for nowadays. It captures the energy of the first several episodes. Season 1 was drawn by hand, giving it a different look than the later seasons that were made using a computer. Those animation cells can fetch quite the price. But the game itself has a basic premise. You move SpongeBob across the screen to catch jellyfish, trying to catch a blue one to move to the next level. You can jump to catch ones that fly higher, but you can actually just stay at the bottom of the screen and catch whatever flies your way. It's amusing to hear SpongeBob make comments whenever he catches one. It's the jellyfish. It's the jellyfish. Aha! It's the jellyfish. Gotta love those raspy voice lines that remind us we're playing a really old game. And look at how SpongeBob moves. This is how I approach people in public. There are three stages, and it gets harder to avoid the jellyfish as you go. You lose health if you get stung, and when it's fully drained, it's game over. You can go for a high score in the meantime. So yeah, it isn't the most detailed thing in existence. Still, it gave some of the early fans of Spongebob something to do while waiting for the 90s to end. I mean, everyone thought computers were gonna go haywire in the 2000s, so might as well make the most of them. But you could also get a screensaver for winning it. That's even how the site used to advertise it. Now here's Slider. Wait, didn't we review this already? No, it's not actually the Wild Tangent Slider. I can't think about that for too long. I just might pass out from the sheer amount of nostalgia. But this is just a slide puzzle where you move pieces into place to create an image. And check out this ancient logo. The game keeps track of your moves and gives you the option to see the image you're trying to create, but it's actually really hard. This is how I found out that I am not good at slide puzzles. But what do you think will happen if I click the solve button? Oh wow, I did it! I solved it! Now here's Anchovy Feeding Frenzy, based on the very first episode, Help Wanted. Could this be the first Spongebob game to ever feature a cutscene? Like in the episode, the anchovies show up in buses and invade the Krusty Krab. Now you have to throw Krabby Patties at them. With every 10 anchovies you feed, you move to the next stage. Squidward and Mr. Krabs are gradually sinking in the crow's nest, so you have to be quick. Also, Patrick can appear among the anchovies and give you bonus points if you hit him. Careful, Patrick. We learned in the episode Sponge Chovy that it's very dangerous to hang out with the anchovies. Honestly, the biggest issue with this game is that it feels kind of dead for how intense of a scene this should be. Check it out. I think it really could have used some background music. But it's really easy, and when you win, you become Employee of the Month. Darn. Another simple game is Bubble Ball. Eh, maybe a little too simple. You control Spongebob and bounce a bubble between you and Patrick. What's up with his eyes? You have to score three points to win a round. However, only your score resets when a new round begins. Patrick gets to keep all his points. How's that fair? Also, it's a little too easy for something like this to happen. Any day now. Surely the bubble will find its way. So yeah, this isn't the greatest game in the Spongebob library, but if you want to play somewhat of a Pong game with Spongebob PNGs, then this might be it. Now here's a classic. Spongebob Talking Heads and you may find yourself staring at Spongebob, Patrick, Squidward, and Sandy, and you may find yourself clicking on them, and you may find yourself hearing them say quotes from the show, and you may find yourself hearing the lines said with very strange microphone quality, and you may ask yourself, well, why am I playing this? Good morning! I got a surprise for you! Thinking straight is what I do! <laughs> now it's time to- Hold on! I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. Wanna blow some- Well, we could be tattered and bark on a tree. 
I like you, SpongeBob. Can we lower the volume, please? This game is so intense, you might end up burning down the house. But here's the most detailed one so far. This is Mrs. Puff's Boating School, the first SpongeBob driving game. This is based on the episode Boating School. You can tell because he's wearing the hat that may or may not have an antenna underneath it. We just might be cheating. You use the mouse to collect food and avoid obstacles. If you collect five pieces of underwear, you can use a turbo boost. But if you try to use the turbo without having sufficient underwear... Oh Whoa, Squidward, chill out. Not during my driver's test. Oh 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 you hear Squidward moan like that every time you try to use the turbo. I think I figured out the twist. In this, unlike in the episode, Squidward is the one helping Spongebob pass his test. Things are going pretty well, nothing out of the ordinary. Then all of a sudden, Mrs. Puff realizes her student is cheating when she hears this over the radio. Oh More power-ups and obstacles come with every stage. You can go up ramps, collect gas to regain lost health, and try to avoid things like jellyfish. When you finally do use the turbo, it's underwhelming to say the least. But for a fun little detail, Mrs. Puff gets bigger with every obstacle you hit. Then when you lose, you send her to the hospital. I love how the last stage simply says last as long as you can. They basically said, no, you won't be winning this, just try your best. But even with all the silly aspects, this is a pretty alright game. It isn't too hard, but not too easy either. This might be the best Spongebob game of 99. But strangely enough, some sources say this came out in 1999, while others say it came out in 2000. So I don't know who to believe. The Wayback Machine wasn't exactly helping me with this. But before we move on to Y2K, there's a very specific game that I want to close the 90s with, simply because of how utterly amazing it is. This is Run for the Krusty Krab. Or should I say, Spongebob Krusty Krab in Run for the... Just look at how big the instruction sheet is. Seeing this, you might assume this is a pretty complicated game, right? Well, let's check it out. Oh god, it's a Metroid. Okay, maybe not, but why are you being attacked by realistic jellyfish? Look at the way Spongebob moves. Why is his face way too small for his body? Basically, you have to reach the Krusty Krab by jumping over obstacles and avoiding enemies. And when you duck... Some of the obstacles are really hard to jump over, and when you die, this happens. I don't know why, but I find this game over absolutely hilarious. You just kind of float away. The cutscene when you win is almost just as good. To be honest though, the game is worth playing purely because of how silly it is. It adds a whole layer of enjoyment. But let's move on to 2000. We can play with this coloring book. Yippee! But the other highlight of this year was Bubblegram. This is based on the episode Naughty Nautical Neighbors, where Spongebob and Patrick were sending messages to each other through bubbles. Spongebob sends a bubble with a message over to Patrick's house, but in order for him to come outside, you need to collect 10 bubbles. The entire time, Squidward is trying to pop you with his music notes. You also have to avoid jellyfish, as well as, well, the top of the screen. That's right, if you fly too high or too low, you lose a life. This can make it harder to collect bubbles in tight spaces. It's a cool detail that your bubble can take on different shapes, though. Then when Patrick finally comes out, you have to move your bubble into his jellyfish net, which is easier said than done. Shouldn't he get the message as long as it pops next to him? That's how it worked in the episode. All things considered, this is a pretty difficult game to get the hang of. Once you do though, it isn't too bad. But if you're looking for a Spongebob game in 2000, I hear he just appeared in Nicktoons Racing. Gee, I wonder if his show will ever be as big as Rugrats. So let's move on to 2001. We'd better hurry up and get through these games because this cool new franchise called Bionicle just came out. We need to buy some figures before we go see Shrek later. But this year introduced a very important company to the Spongebob scene. At the time, they went by the name iTunes. Spelled like this. You might recognize them for their work on many different cartoon Flash games, but actually, for most of their releases, they went by a completely different name. That name was snap to play who you might recognize as the devs behind Obstacle Odyssey, which came out in 2004. We've also covered a few games they made for Invader Zim before, but these two games they made in 2001 were earlier works for them, so let's see how they are. In Crater Crossing, you have to jump across bubbles to reach Gary the Snail on the other side of a chasm. It might take you a bit to figure out how it works, but 
it isn't too bad once you understand it. You just have to wait for the bubbles to rise up, then you jump to them. Make sure you're aware of the distance, though. Some might seem closer than they are. It can be a bit of a gamble sometimes, because you never know when a bubble is actually going to appear. You have a limited amount of lives, so you can't mess around too much. Double bubbles make you bounce, but that isn't always a good thing. Neither is the seahorse that takes you across the map, because you don't know where it's going to drop you. It could just drop you to your death if there aren't any bubbles to jump on. Obstacles can also really mess you up when you try to avoid them. As a challenging game, it isn't bad, but I wish it was a little less dependent on chance. The other iTunes game is Flipper Flop, which is a Krabby Patty cooking simulator. Squidward gives you an order, then you have to cook a burger and add the right ingredients. It even has a tutorial. Haha, <laughs> my cursor is bigger than yours. You cover different shifts throughout the day and try to make the patties right. The game isn't super forgiving if you mess up. You also have to watch out for Patrick, who just comes in without warning and eats your sandwich. I've never hated the Sea Star more than I have while playing this game. I also found the controls really stiff in this. Sometimes it doesn't fully register when I click on something. Honestly, SpongeBob's Big Adventures had a better version of this concept. It was basically an improved version of the same thing. But let's conclude this trip to the past with a game from 2002, Bikini Bottom or Bust, developed by Jet City Studios. They're mostly known for making an abundance of Hey Arnold games. This seems to be based on the episode Rock Bottom, where SpongeBob is flying back to Bikini Bottom on his Glove World balloon. You only have three spares, so make sure they don't burst. But you do have to burst bubbles as you go up for bonus points. You also have to avoid nets or cut through them, as well as the walls that are super sharp. Such an inconvenient chasm to fly through. It also keeps telling you that you're almost to the top when you aren't. How could it lie to you like that? But what's really interesting is when your final balloon bursts, you get to see yourself fall and lose all your points as you hit every obstacle. Well, he's dead. The game is okay, nothing to write home about, though. So that about does it for the games I wanted to cover here. Another one released this year was SpongeBob Saves the Krusty Krab, which we covered in an older video. But I hope you enjoyed this little trip to the past. While we do have many SpongeBob games to choose from nowadays, it never hurts to go back and see where we started from. Thank you for joining me, I will see you in the next memory.